Today, we all know Tata Motors as one of the leading automakers in the Indian market. The company has spread its wings across various vehicle segments and the company is doing quite well in terms of sales and even the brand image is quite good these days. Now, we all know what is the present story, but do you know how it all started and what were the ups and downs? Wait, let me tell you. Tata Motors is headquartered in Mumbai and they are a part of the massive Tata Group conglomerate. Tata Group operates in a lot of different sectors across various verticals. Tata Motors manufactures cars, buses, trucks, vans and even defense vehicles. The company was founded two years before independence in 1945 as a manufacturer of locomotives. It was called Tata Engineering and Locomotive Company which is known as Telco and the company then got into a collaboration with Daimler-Benz AG and manufactured the first commercial vehicle in 1954. This collaboration lasted till 1969. Tata Motors entered the passenger vehicle segment in 1988 with the Tata Mobile followed by the Tata Sierra in 1991, followed by the Tata Estate in 1992, Sumo in 1994 and the first Safari in 1998. The Tata Indica was launched 25 years back in 1998 and it was the first Indian indigenous car. The Tata Indica was designed by IDEA in Italy and even though it received a lot of flack initially, the car sold well thanks to its spacious interior and the fuel efficient nature. Couple of years later, Tata Motors worked on the Indica, improved it massively and then launched the Indica V2 which was a lot better than the original version of the car. The Indica V2 went on to become a huge success story and it offered sleepless nights to rivals from Hyundai and Maruti Suzuki. In 2004, Tata Motors acquired Daewoo South Korea truck manufacturing unit Daewoo Commercial Vehicles Company which was later renamed to Tata Daewoo and on 27th September 2004, Ratan Tata rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange to celebrate the listing of Tata Motors. In 2009, Five, Tata Motors acquired a 21% controlling stake in Hispano which is a Spanish coach and bus maker. Tata's Starbus and Globus buses were made in collaboration with Hispano while the Noah's range of trucks was also made with Tata Devu. In 2006, Tata made a joint venture with Brazil's Marco Polo to jointly make new buses and we saw a lot of them plying on Mumbai roads as well. In 2008, in a historic moment, Tata Motors acquired Jaguar Land Rover from Ford Motor Company. Now, let's quickly glance to some of the important timelines in the history of Tata Motors and then we'll discuss how the brand completely transformed itself after 2015. In 2012, Tata Motors announced that it would invest around 6 billion rupees in the development of futuristic infantry combat vehicles in collaboration with the DRDO. In 2013, Tata Motors announced that it will sell in India the first vehicle in the world to run on compressed air engines designed by French company MDI and dubbed as Minicat. In 2014, Tata Motors introduced the first ever truck racing championship in India and it was called the T1 Prima Truck Racing Championship. On 26 January 2014, in a very tragic incident, Tata Motors Managing Director Carl Slim was found dead. He fell from the 22nd floor to the 4th floor of the Shangri-La Hotel in Bangkok where he had gone to attend a meeting of Tata Motors Thailand. On 2nd November 2015, Tata Motors announced Lionel Messi as their brand ambassador to promote and endorse their passenger vehicles globally. On 27 December 2015, 16, Tata Motors announced Akshay Kumar as the brand ambassador for the commercial vehicles range. Now, what really happened in the past decade? Tata Motors had a market share of around 13.7% in 2010, but by 2015, the market share had fallen to just 4.6%. Now, that was a massive degrowth. And what was the reason behind this? The reason was pretty simple. The company had very boring cars, they felt very drab, they felt very utilitarian, and the competition was just moving ahead. Automakers like Maruti Suzuki, Hyundai, Honda, Toyota, all of them were raking in big sales with their new mass market cars all of them were bringing in modern cars to India while Tata Motors was selling the same old boring cars. The existing lineup of Tata Motors felt very commercial and somehow it did not excite Indian buyers. It was appealing to the older audiences but the new age buyers did not find any sort of liking in the current lineup of Tata Motors. The erstwhile Indica, Indigo, Manza, Vista all of them looked very similar and somehow they did not have any modern touches to them. They all looked and felt from the previous decade and somehow there was just no design innovation. The Safari Storm wasn't really creating any sort of storm and the Mahindra Scorpio was eating up its market share. The Tata Aria had also failed in a big manner and well, sales were just going down. The Tata Nano was also fetching average sales at best. What was needed was a big change in the portfolio, a big upgrade in the marketing strategy and a shift in the way people looked at Tata Motors. While the commercial vehicle segment of Tata Motors was doing really well, the passenger vehicle segment was in doldrums, literally. Enough was enough, Tata Motors decided to go back to the drawing board 
road. The management knew that the Indian market is hard to ignore and they were very serious about bringing in a massive change in the product portfolio. The automaker knew that they had to bring in younger and fresher products to the market loaded with more tech and with better engine options to move away from the commercial and the utilitarian feel of the older Tata cars. The first new products to come out of the new strategy in 2014 were the Bolt and the Zest. Now both the cars were quite good, they had good build quality, they had the famous 1.3 litre MJD diesel engine, they drove quite well, they had a decent list of features also but they failed and they failed only for one big reason, they looked very similar to the older Indica and the Indigo. Then came the Tata Zika in 2016 which was later renamed to Tata Tiago and this car was the starting of a new change. This hatchback started a new wave for the automaker and it came across as a truly capable product. The Tiago became an instant hit thanks to its spacious interior, its list of features, its engine options and of course the value for money pricing. Apart from that, the safety of this car was like a cherry on the cake. The Tata Tiago was actually fetching good sales and the hatchback started facing the heat and then came the Tigor which was based on the Tiago but it came with a small boot and it was placed in the sub 4 meter sedan segment. The biggest turning point came in 2017 when Tata Motors came out with the Nexon. People had never seen something like this from the house of Tata. The Tata Nexon is based on Tata's old architecture but with some new elements and it has performed amazingly well over the past 5 to 6 years. Together, the Tiago and the Nexon have created massive strides for Tata Motors and even today, in 2023, both of them are selling in pretty decent numbers. The Tiago was offered with petrol and diesel earlier, then came a JTP version and then came a CNG version. Right now, Tata offers the Tiago with petrol, CNG and EV options and it also gets an NRG crossover version. The Tata Nexon also gets a lot of different partner options like petrol, diesel and EV and again, all of these are doing quite well. It was at the 2018 Auto Expo when Tata Motors showcased the H5X concept and people got a taste of what the future will look like. The Harrier was soon launched and even though it had some initial problems, it was actually called one of the best Indian SUVs. To move away from their older products and the older designs, Tata Motors discontinued the Safari Storm and the Hexa and they've started focusing on the Impact Design 2.0 strategy. With this, the automaker also launched the Altros and again the Altros has become a massive success and its EV version is also incoming. Tata then went on to launch the new Safari which is based on the Harrier and the Harrier itself is based on the Omega platform which is derived from Land Rover's D8 architecture. Meanwhile, if we talk about the new edge cars like the Altros and the Punch, both of these are based on Tata Motors' new Alpha architecture. Sales were increasing massively and Tata Motors kept updating its portfolio with regular updates being given to all the products. With their new Forever Young strategy, their company also started giving regular updates and new additions to the Nexon, Nexon EV, Harrier and Safari to keep the product lineup looking fresh. Another thing that played a big role in improving Tata Motors' image was the importance given to safety. The Nexon was the first ever Indian car to score a 5-star global NCAP rating way back in 2017 and then products like the Altros, Punch, Tiago, Tigor, all of them scored very nice safety ratings. However, even today, the flagship SUVs Harrier and Safari still don't have a safety rating. Along with launching new products, the automaker has also done a lot of clever things like launching multiple variants of the same product to cater to a wider customer base. The existing portfolio is quite vast and if you talk about ICE vehicles, they have cars ranging from 5 lakh to 25 lakh and if you talk about the EVs, they have cars ranging from 9 lakh to 20 lakh which means they cater to a lot of different types of audiences. Lots of promising cars are expected in the future and we got a taste of that also at the recently concluded 2023 Auto Expo where the automaker had the biggest pavilion. I've been talking about passenger cars only but the company has actually taken big strides in commercial vehicles too with a lot of new innovations. They worked on feedback and got some much needed changes on the Harrier and the Safari and they also brought in some new variants of the Altros and the Punch. The EV portfolio is also going to be exciting ahead with the arrival of the Harrier EV, the Curve EV, the Sierra EV and of course the Avinia. So that's how Tata Motors turned around their brand strategy in the last 7 years. The company currently has a market share of 14% and it is a constant battle between Tata Motors and Hyundai for the second spot in the Indian automotive market. On 24th March 2020, Tata Motors Limited announced that it would spin off its passenger vehicles arm into a separate unit within the company and on 5th March 2021, shareholders of the company approved having off its passenger vehicles business into a different entity. So that brings us to the end of this video, the first video in this new series based on case studies of various automakers and the next one will be on Mahindra. If you want to see any particular automaker's case study, if you have any tips, any suggestions, please let us know in the comment section below and uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the Motorbeam channel.